Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, both free sites. Today is Thursday, January the 3rd, 2019. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, there's a big dust-up at Light Heavyweight. It's for the interim WBA World Light Heavyweight title. Now, it features an unbeaten fighter, Marcus Brown, who is only a slight underdog. He's a 6-5 to five underdog. So you have a 28-year-old who's going up against a guy in his mid-30s, right? Badu Jack, <clears throat> former champion. And you have this 28-year-old having his moment of truth. For the gamblers, this is a dangerous fight to bet on. So, of course, how could I avoid <laughs> making a video on this fight? We're looking for tough fights like this one. Just understand, though, this is high risk. Now, let's talk about the boxing business for just a second. You know, there's a big question that every boxing manager has to ask themselves, right? How deep is the water that I'm going to place my fighter in? You have different philosophies. You have boxing managers who want to make sure their fighter gets to 20 and 0. Want to make sure that their fighter doesn't suffer a hiccup on the way to a world ranking. So they'll study opponents. They'll study them. Right? Not every boxing manager does this. They'll figure out which opponents are easy touches. Which opponents have great records but who don't have the style to deal with their young lion? And they'll take that road. Right? Now that doesn't mean that they're protected fighter. The guy they're not throwing to the wolves is a scrub. Doesn't mean that at all. It simply means that they have a guy who they want to make sure makes it onto the world stage. Keep in mind, too, they're investors. Sometimes the boxing manager is the investor who have poured a lot of money into helping this fighter, right? Starving fighters starting out don't have the money to hire sparring partners, to actually have a trainer and to pay for a training camp. So they're doing things on credit. They're doing things on advances. So the investors want a rate of return. One way to get them that rate of return is by having the fighter fight easy fights until that fighter hits the world stage, gets a contender ranking. But then you got the other road. Right? This is the road where the people behind the fighter throw the fighter to the wolves. Right? The fighter could have a lot of skills. The fighter could have a lot of promise. The idea is if this fighter gets by these opponents, then we'll know he's the real deal. More importantly, the world will know he's the real deal, right? So you have had situations where world-class fighters early in their careers have been thrown into fights against people like Jose Pedraza, right? That's where Devontae Davis ended up. Big fight early in his career. After that fight, Davis started saying, hey, the people behind me thought I was going to lose this fight. You can Google it. Right? You can Google it. Right? Fighters will complain that they were put in situations that they could lose. But understand, one of the reasons we know about Gravante Davis is that he had that fight. 
is that he won the title, is that he traveled across the ocean in a subsequent fight. It's because he's been put in tough situations that we know he can handle tough opposition. And it's why we consider him to be a great fighter. So in this fight, you have the two approaches coming together. You have protected fighter. He's unbeaten, but folks, he's protected. Understand, this is YouTube. This is not the mainstream boxing media. Right? I don't have to watch my words for fear of the political fallout. I'm not trying to interview fighters, so I don't worry about losing access because I don't have access. I'm not even trying to cultivate access. Marcus Brown, bottom line, straight up, is a protected fighter. What do I mean by that? He fights against guys who have great records. One loss, some are unbeaten, Sean Moynihan was unbeaten, but who don't have titles, right? The guys he's fighting, many of them haven't been tested in championship matches. Some have, Thomas Williams Jr. has, but others haven't. I believe the goal for his matchmaker was to get people in the door, was to say, here's an unbeaten fighter against another guy who has no losses or one loss, right? So the fans flock. But that's different. That's different than saying, here is our unbeaten fighter against the number one ranked contender in the world or a guy with a title. So, Marcus Brown has fought guys like Lennon Castillo, Francie Natetta, Sean Moynihan, Thomas Williams Jr. Now this is a boxing site. You are the boxing hardcore. You're not regular fans. You're fans who keep track of the sport week to week. Some of the names I've mentioned, I'm guessing many of you have never heard of. They don't quite ring a bell. Sean Moynihan is known in the Northeast. That was a big fight. Marcus Brown unbeaten at the time, Sean Moynihan unbeaten at the time. But he's a regional fighter. He's not a national fighter. He's not known on the world stage. So you have protected Marcus Brown. And he's going up against unprotected. This is the other side of the street, folks. He's going up against unprotected Badu Jack. What do I mean by that? I'm just going to read you Badu Jack's last six fights. I'm guessing you, the boxing hardcore, are going to recognize most, if not all, of the names. Right? Badu Jack's last fight was for the WBC light heavyweight title. His opponent was Adonis Stevenson. Let me just say, too, I understand Adonis Stevenson is awake. Brother, our prayers are with you. The fight before that, <clears throat> Badu Jack fought for the WBA <laughs> light heavyweight championship. He fought against Nathan Cleverly. The fight before that, and keep in mind, in boxing, a guy will fight a mandatory or a guy will fight a big fight. Then he'll fight elective fights. He'll take a breather. Not every fight is a big fight. Somebody tell that to Badu Jack. The fight before that, Badu Jack fought for the IBF and WBC super middleweight title against James DeGale. The fight before that, Badu Jack was fighting for the WBC super middleweight title against Lucien Butte. The fight before that, 
He fought again in a WBC super middleweight title bout <laughs> against George Groves. The fight before that WBC super middleweight title contest against Anthony Durrell. Right, Badu Jack is the guy who shows up for work every day. Right? If somebody said to you, you know, I think Badu Jack is dodging someone, a reasonable response would be to laugh. Right? This is one of the most unprotected hardcore resumes in the sport of boxing. Right? Badu Jack's idea of winning the light heavyweight crown is to fight the WBA champion cleverly then to fight the WBC champion Adonis Stevenson right this is a guy not looking for side doors or back doors this is a guy who walks in the front door right so for me there's an experience gap here. I believe this fight comes down to where it's fought in the ring. Marcus Brown has great legs. He's 6'2", six, 6'1 six, and a half moves, right? He can jump around the ring. Badu Jack doesn't have his legs. He just doesn't. Right? So Marcus Brown is going to get to spots first. Here's the secret to this fight, one man's opinion. Having great legs doesn't mean that you have a back foot game. It doesn't mean that you can fight a guy using your legs win round after round after round and not be running right it doesn't mean that if the other guy starts to cut off the ring on you that you're still comfortable i believe marcus brown who is explosive who comes in who when he gets going will start popping off combinations who looks good on film has hand speed. I believe Marcus Brown wins the early rounds of this fight. But, as has been the pattern in Badu Jack fights, right? James DeGale gets out on him, wins the first few rounds. Adonis Stevenson gets out on him, wins the first few rounds. But as the fight gets to the later rounds, I believe the pocket is going to start to collapse. I believe Badu Jack is going to start getting inside. Badu Jack's a hellacious puncher. Badu Jack is a hellacious body puncher. Right? Marcus Brown, in my opinion, doesn't have the back foot game to fully deal with Badu Jack when the pocket collapses. Right? The question for me is whether he builds up a big enough lead. Whether he builds up a big enough lead to coast in the later part of the fight. And because this is an interim title fight, because it's a 12-round fight, not a 10-round fight, and because Badu Jack has literally been fighting world-class opponent after world-class opponent, because Badu Jack has dealt with fast-handed guys, Nathan Cleverly, for example, James DeGale, when he gets going, because Badu Jack has dealt with sudden guys, Adonis Stevenson, outside, pops it inside. Because Badu Jack has dealt with southpaws, right? Marcus Brown's a southpaw. 
Adonis Stevenson as a southpaw. The bet I like here is to take the favorite, Badu Jack, to win the fight. I'm going to hedge to play with Marcus Brown by KO. Badu Jack has one loss on his record. It's to Derek Edwards. Derek Edwards is a lot like Marcus Brown, right? Has power, throws it unexpectedly, can collapse the pocket quickly. Now that fight happened years ago. Badu Jack gets knocked out. You can look at that fight here on YouTube. It's posted. That fight happened years ago. Badu Jack since then has fought tough opponent after tough opponent. I'm sure Badu Jack understands that even when the guy's a little bit of a distance away from him, he needs to be mindful of the guy's explosiveness. Right? But I feel what's going to happen here is we're going to get to round seven, round eight, round nine. Marcus Brown's going to start feeling Badu Jack's power. Badu Jack is going to collapse the pocket. And Marcus Brown, other than clinching Badu Jack, is not going to know what to do. This is not Tyson Fury. This is not a guy who can vanish Martirosian. This is not a guy who can get on his back foot and fight you in reverse. Okay, you're coming forward. I'll play the matador here. Right? I'll keep you at a distance. Your superior inside game is never going to happen because I'm not going to allow you to become fully inside on me. I don't believe Marcus Brown, who has great legs, has that skill set. I believe Marcus Brown is more of a guy who engages, then backs away to safety. Because he's a puncher with a greater than 70% KO ratio, a lot of guys aren't going to follow him around the ring. He's fighting a different type of dude here. Right? He's fighting a guy who was coming after Adonis Stevenson late in a fight in Canada. He's fighting a guy who kept pressing against James DeGale when he was behind in the later rounds. Power matters, experience matters, the ability to cut off the ring matters, having skills deep in the pocket matters, especially against younger prodigy type guys who are episodic, who aren't accustomed to being hunted down and who haven't faced anything close to the level of opposition Badu Jack has faced. I think Badu Jack wins this fight. I'll hedge the play with Brown by KO, since Brown is a better than even money play just to win. Since Badu Jack has not been stopped since the Derek Edwards fight, and that was the only time he was ever stopped. Since he's gone the distance with tough hombres. I'm guessing that Marcus Brown by KO is going to get you a sizable rate of return right? Expected winnings. That will enable you to hedge this play. I like the favorite here, Badu Jack. If I had one bet to make, it would be Badu Jack to win the fight. I'll hedge it with Marcus Brown by KO. That's how I see it. Let me point out too, that Badu Jack is one of the few fighters in the sport calling out Bivol at 175. In other words, this is a guy in his mid-30s who only wants to fight the very, very best. Right? I like battle-tested Badu Jack here to win, hedged with unbeaten Marcus Brown by KO. I've seen Badu Jack hurt. Right? He's hurt in the Adonis Stevenson fight. And I've seen him survive. Right? I have not seen Marcus Brown badly hurt. That could be a big difference in this fight. Right? Survival skills, you don't know if a fighter has them until they need them. 
Badu Jack has survival skills. I think he's going to land at least a few shots on Marcus Brown. Let me say, too, when I see a guy who's athletic, tall, slender, I wonder whether they can take body shots. Right? Badu Jack is definitely going to land some body shots in this fight. One of the things to look for is how Marcus Brown takes them. That's what I think. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.